All right. Good. Okay. Um, so uh, this is the meeting for the Parks and Rec Advisory Board and Harbor Management Commission. <laughs> Usually we start off with uh, the people of public comments. Um, the, uh, John, I don't know if you got anything to bring to us, and that way you don't have to stay for the whole meeting. You are welcome to stay for the whole meeting. But um, no, excellent. I uh, appreciate it. If, if uh, I assume I'm the only John on the line, so um, John Miller and um, I did send uh, an email to uh, Kathy with uh, a couple of photographs, just um, taken it very, very recently. Um, and what I had observed was the um, the growth, the aquatic weeds and algae on on the water surface at the 1860 reservoir, and it was. Uh, Compared to other years, it was extremely early in the season for this. So um, I had reached out uh, maybe even a month and a half prior to see if there was any plan in place um, through the town to to manage the this you know body of water, and um, that's really what I'm looking for. I, I think in the interim, since since I sent that Kathy, there was actually a, a treatment. Um, or maybe almost about the time I was sending it, it was, but, uh, either way there, there was a treatment applied that same day and, um, with some results, you know, visible, I think it's actually improved, um, you know, hard to say, cause these things grow from the bottom, but at least on the surface of the water, it's noticeably better. So that's encouraging. Um, uh, did you get my email today? No, unfortunately. Uh, so that's uh, that's unfortunate. Oh, okay. No, I didn't. Because um, I did give you an update, but I'll let you finish. Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, I apologize for the you know communications are uh, a challenge. For, I think for all of us. But um, the um, thanks for the update. The yeah the 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 um, the notice was posted. It looked like they used a uh, a product called Captain and a product called Reward. Um, I'm curious to know if there's a um, a schedule of treatments, um, you know, how frequently they come or um, on, under what circumstances do they come? Is there a is there a management plan or is it is it more a matter of um, you you kind of rely on somebody to point it out to you or or even if and and then if that's the case, then it falls under park and rec. So I'll know, you know, I'll know where to, to take a concern if I have one. John, it actually does not fall under parks and rec. It falls under our physical services division, the maintenance department. And I did okay. reach out to them and they sent me back an email to let, and I did, I did send this to you. So you probably just haven't seen it yet. But uh, I got a response back that they said that the p uh, ponds, including the reservoir, were treated this week, and that it's about it was about 30 days from when it usually gets treated due to the state's delay in processing deep applications. So they gotcha. actually do have a plan where they do it every year and mm -hmm. at a very particular time but they have to mm -hmm. apply to deep first to get permission to do it. So mm -hmm. this is the first application and then they'll do another treatment in uh, 20 to 30 days. Okay. So there is a plan to do that. And it's Excellent. just not in my budget. So I wasn't sure if it was still in the um, physical services budget, but it is. Excellent. Um, yeah, I think with the knock, weed and, and some of the other vegetation I, I from prior experiences it, it's a um, it, you know going all the way back to the uh, mid 90s it, it was um, you know post dredging it was uh, it was good to watch how successful it would be under proper you know management and I think that knowing that there is such a plan in place it'll be uh, it'll be a resource that should be there for a long time. So that's, that's encouraging. Um, so I'll, I guess that's unfortunate. The permitting, I would have thought the permitting um, kind of stayed in front of the curve, especially if it was time sensitive, but um, 
I do know. Yeah, they're they're probably uh, that makes sense too. Unfortunately, they uh, they can't do everything. So, um, but if I think you can be proactive that way, like your permits, you know, maybe maybe there's something that can be done to uh, keep the permits in front of the curve. But it was a you know it was a particularly dry and and uh, warm spell too. But you could see it coming. I could see it coming. Uh, certainly 30 days ago, a little even prior, I think was when I first reached out to see if uh, there was a plan in place. So yeah, well, that's good news. Got, I did not get your first reach out, John. It didn't make it to me. No. Okay. Well, um, yeah, like I said, I didn't, I didn't know for sure which department it fell under. Mm -hmm. um, and the, even like, um, so it's really like a third party, but it's it, knowing that it's, it's, you know, it's being dealt with is, is like I said, encouraging. And um, so I'll look for another treatment in about 20 days. Is there anything um, years past, we used to get a notice, you know, so like we would, as an adjacent owner, you would know it was, you know, either in the schedule or it was coming, but if there's anything, um, you know, uh, anything to kind of keep us informed, even if it's just a verbal, you know, they're, they're coming in about 20 days. That's helpful to know. And then, uh, is there anything beyond that? Are you aware? Like, is not it a, that they, they did not send that to me. I, I would expect that's the, that they do the two and it's probably always worked in the past, but okay. I'm not, I'm not involved in that, so I couldn't, I'd be speculating, but I'm guessing that they always just do the two. Kathy, it's, it's Mike Desai here. I just have one quick question. Are they obligated, like when they fertilize your lawn, to post anything around there so people would know that it was treated? My guess is that it depends on the product, but okay. I could ask that question and find out. John, have you ever gotten anything in the past? If you go way back, um, okay. And I, you know, I do remember they, you know, they would ask permission, can we post this on a tree or, or something along along the uh, the perimeter. Um, in this case, it wasn't that it was unposted, but um, you kind of had to go out. In fact, that's when I, the second picture that I sent you was kind of what, you know, and going out there, I found, um, I found that uh, the, the dumping problem out there around that boat launch area has really uh, kind of gotten into a, uh, you know, you're seeing a lot of brick mortar. Um, yeah, it's a constant the, uh, problem. Yeah, construction debris. I yeah. mean, and, and uh, yeah, I mean, if you couple that with, um, you know, late night mischievous behavior um, or just, and by the way, I said authorized, and obviously in my email, I, I meant to say unauthorized dumping, but, um, you know, I'm sure it's uh, an uncomfortable thing for the, the police department to have to go back there at uh, two in the morning, you know, so it's kind of like, uh, I, and you had it, if they, um, at least part of it would be to um, make sure it gets locked, and I don't know if there's a lock uh I know at one point there wasn't a lock available. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the case anymore. But as far as, um, you know, monitoring or, or getting a handle on the dumping, like you said, if it's a constant problem, I mean, the most I can do here is kind of, uh, and we have, if when, when something doesn't look right, we'll call in, but often that's kind of after the fact. Um, and I can never be sure, but, you know, if it's, I don't know what could be done, but I can see that it's clearly out of control back there. It, it really is, uh, it's no longer, you know, it's no longer like you can send, uh, you, I don't know how you get, get that under control. Uh, it's, I just wonder if there's some, some means of, um, uh, I don't know what the answer would be. I, I don't know what tools are in the bags these days to, you know, a surveillance type of thing would would be ideal with maybe kill, kill more, more than one bird with, you know, the same stone. And I did, um, what John is referring to also is the entrance to the 1860 reservoir has a gate that locks. 
And in the past, that gate would always be, well, most of the time it would be locked at night and then unlocked again in the morning by the police department, whatever the patrol uh, car was in that vicinity. They would do that on a regular basis. And when John sent me that the gate didn't look like it had been locked, I checked with the police chief who told me that um, the last he had heard is that the gate and the lock, they needed to be fixed. And he was, and so the police were not locking the gate and he was waiting to hear if the gate and lock had been fixed. And so he was <coughs> gonna check into it. And he did get back to me to say, he did just get noticed that the ga gate and lock have been fixed and the police will start again, locking it at night and unlocking it in the morning. So keep an eye out, John, just to see that that happens. But that's, that's helped a lot, just keeping everybody, um, well, keeping the people who don't belong there at night out of there and also to help with the dumping that might be done after hours. Yeah, well, that, I guess that's encouraging too. Um, I wish I had a better answer for you on, on uh, what to do about the um, these guys that are, you know, reckless with um, just loading stuff up and throwing it back there. That's yeah. uh, it, in some ways, it, it, I don't know. I mean, it that's that's kind of a tough one, and I don't know if you have any uh, any thoughts from. I'm sure it's probably not the only place in town where it happens, but in this instance, it's just. Um, it's got to be an easy place for somebody to, you know, feel like they're not being watched or monitored or, or potentially going to be, uh, you know, fined. And, uh, if there were some way that I can help bringing that under control, uh, you know, I'll be happy to work with you there. But, uh, I was really surprised to see how, how, um, bad it had gotten. It almost, it almost just kind of almost like resembles like it's, like it's a, a landfill, you know, it just, um, it, I think, you know, your typical construction guy wouldn't do that. So these, these are, these are, um, you know, they're, they're not your, uh, deeper mission decided to drop his garbage off. You got it. Yeah. Just doesn't know what else to do with it. And, and, uh, and, and, you know, that they may, they, they, I don't think though, that's, that's not like your nighttime, I that I don't think that's they're they're kind of like the same problem but two different sources of <laughs> I don't think they're driving back there at two in the morning to do it I I think okay. they're just guys that um taking advantage you know, of after work so I cast the pull and clean the garbage out at the same time yeah yeah I how you put it so as I said when when I see something um, and we had one but. Um, you know, it's it's kind of like uh, if there's something you do in other areas of the town or, or something that can be done, um, you know, we're here to help. So uh, that's it's unfortunate, but but once once it's it almost it almost looks like it's so reckless that the people may not think twice about doing it anymore. Almost as if to say. Uh, it seems like maybe the answer is just a, a good stiff fine or something would send the notice out, but. Yeah, we already have but, a fine in place. It's just a matter of catching them. Hmm. Because yeah, yeah. It's, my, it's, it's Mike Beasley again. I, I assume that the area is posted too, because I know without signs enforcement, even though it can be done, but I, I assume there's signs up there, you know, no dumping and when it's open and stuff. So I, I would assume that there are signs there. If not, there probably should be. I can check. There, there were signs. Sometimes they disappear, but I can check. And we've also done a work order, John, to go in there and clean everything out. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I imagine that's frustrating for the guys to go in there and clean it out to think that all they're doing is, uh, you know, making it available for somebody to make a mess but uh so I'll, I'll i think everything you've told me is is very encouraging um and if if you should um have any way that uh you think of that uh you know we can kind of work with uh whatever the powers that be for um bringing that dumping issue under control um you know i'm here so 
Um, okay. Happy to help. And, and when we have areas like this where this pops up, we do talk with the police to give it extra attention to see if they yep. can um, kind of keep an eye out on it. So we do that also. Yeah, great. Yeah, I mean, that's the one. I mean, early in the, the COVID days, I mean, it's um, the recreational use. You could see the guys in the kayaks, you know, they, they were kind of getting choked off before. It, as I say, it, it looks quite a bit better now than it did when I took those pictures and hopefully that'll continue in the next 20 days. But the, um, the late night use really escalated. Um, and now the days are longer. So, um, it's not as, you know, the cutoff line's not as pronounced. So you may have a responsible user out there late, you know, eight thirty, nine o'clock, but back, back then it was, um, you know, you were seeing people driving back there at 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And that's not a good thing. That that's that's an accident waiting to happen. And that's where I say you you kind of feel for uh, the police department if if it now becomes their job to escort you know multiple vehicles out of there safely. And and I kind of hope that the um, the gate I I wasn't aware the gate was damaged in any way. That's that's a substantial gate. So. Uh, um, hopefully the, uh, you know, hopefully it sounds like, uh, there's been a lot going on and the, you know, there's a policy and, uh, we all work together to keep it so that nobody gets, uh, you know, that, that act, that accident waiting to happen late at night is, uh, you know, that's troubling too. You know, you shouldn't have people driving back there at 1130 in the evening. You know, that's a long run to get back there. And, uh, and particularly when you see them pulling out at a high rate of speed, that's that's a really bad sign. So. Okay. Um, I, I I think we're all set with that, right? I think Kathy's addressed um, everything, right? Are you all set, John? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, very uh, much appreciated. Yeah. And certainly, if you have any other issues, contact Kathy, and uh, I'm sure she'll handle it. All right. Appreciate uh, it, everyone. Yep. Thank you. Take care, John. Yeah, take care. Take it easy, John. All right. Our next uh, issue is the minutes. Uh, does anybody see any changes, corrections, additions to the minutes? Move to approve. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, monthly report for May. Smaller than usual. Um, Kathy, anything on the um, May report that stands out is obviously a lot smaller than it usually is. Um, no, it's, um, again, in May, we were offering a lot of online um, virtual classes, fitness, things of that nature. So staff were working on that. And um, basically staff were trying to keep up with what was going on with the governor's office, with the executive orders as to what we could do for the summer. Mm -hmm. So that took a lot of time. All right. Um, letters and announcements. No, it was just the email that we did receive from um, John. Uh, from John. So, and I did, uh, hopefully you received it. I tried to send it out to the board ahead of time. I saw it. Yeah, yeah because, because it had the pictures on it too. So you could mm -hmm. see that. And what had happened out at the reservoir is the gate had been broken to the point it couldn't be repaired. So they had to order a new gate with a particular locking mechanism. And there was just a miscommunication when it was all done that the police weren't notified that it was all done. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I talked to the chief yesterday and he said they would get on it and start locking it again. Kathy, did they just start using the chemicals in, in uh, the nineties or? Because I remember, the, I'm going to date myself, 45 to 50 years ago, that was a big hangout for me. And there was always that algae, always. You couldn't fish without bringing in a big hunk of algae and all. Is that a newer treatment? Yeah, they've gotten newer chemicals. I, 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 and I'm not even sure if chemicals is the right word. I probably shouldn't use that. But they do have a, a management plan for certain of the ponds in town. Spring Street is one of them, the 1860 Reservoir. Uh, and unfortunately up at um, 
1860 reservoir, if you could picture everybody's lawn goes right down to the water. Mm -hmm. And if they're using any kind of lawn service and anything that's going into the um, reservoir, that's also helping everything to grow in there. Wow. Yeah. So I think it was because it was late with deep, they didn't get the early jump on it that they usually do. Kathy, I'm just curious um, if there's been any um, reach out to the people around that area to maybe be better stewards environmentally because they can contribute to the problem, I, I, just for what it's worth. Yeah, I think they did that a long time ago. I don't know that anything's been done recently. It's probably not a bad idea. It could help. Yeah. And and I just following up on the on the comment and depending on what they use, it probably wouldn't hurt to when they do do that to let people know that they're doing something there so people don't get apprehensive regardless of what they're using. When somebody sees somebody putting something in the water and they're if they're using it for recreational purposes as well. <laughs> All right. Um, old business. Do you have anything, Kathy? I didn't have anything. Okay. Anybody else have anything or no? Just, just one one follow up, uh, Dan, for Kathy. Um, how how did you make out with Mr. Fizzle? Is he all squared away on on uh, his boat use and stuff for his program that he wanted to pilot? Yes, he's um he's he's what he does is he sends me a weekly um report on what's coming up that we send down to the COVID attendant and he's been doing um what he thought he's doing about eh, maybe i just got the report for the upcoming week and he's doing maybe um maybe five trainings and two charters oh. so um i think it's 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 starting slow but hopefully it'll grow for him yeah. and i know he's working with the town and with the other um, tour boat company that we have to do a uh, mini uh, ribbon cutting, maybe right after the fourth. Okay. And get a little publicity for them and doing that. So yeah, so he seems pretty good and I get a, an update as he makes some um, appointments. I think he's at the farmer's market too, isn't he? Wasn't he at the yes. farmer's market? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right, uh, new business. I just uh, wanted to give you a heads up on the budget and how Parks and Rec did when it closed out. And so basically, I think what I had told you last, last month kind of held true is any, any budgeted programs that we had for this summer were cut out of the budget. So we used to have, we have a playground program they cut that, those funds and our summer therapeutic recreation program, they cut those summer funds this year because we weren't going to be using the money. And um, they also cut the Willard pool budget for this summer. We still have the money for next summer's startup because that'll be in this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. um, but that was also cut. And then they had originally had on the cutting block Mill Woods but the Mill Woods budget was 137000 between the staff side and the maintenance side. And so they had originally had that cut at 137000 And then they put 100000 back in so that we could open Mill Woods if everything worked out. Um, so we're, we're short 37000 and we're hoping we're going to make that up as we go through the year on, on things. And, because we're going to need that money to keep Millwoods open. Mm -hmm. So um, so that'll be interesting. But I think we can do it. Otherwise, we would never have opened. But we're, we're pretty confident we can do that. Because part of what happens, we have to budget every year to put the water. We dump the water in Millwoods and then fill it up for the swimming season. And we fill it up with a meter through the hydrant that MDC controls. And MDC has the ability to charge us for that water. So we have to budget for that water. But every year, they tell us we don't have to pay them. So that can be anywhere from 10 to 20,000, depending on 
the how much water we need to fill. So we feel we'll, that MDC will give us the free water again next year. So, um, so that's why we're pretty confident we can make that up. So we're okay for this, this budget year because we kept all the other program money. But when we go to submit our budget for the new fiscal year, I have to put all that money back in that they cut to open Willard, to have the playground program, to have the TR program. So that will be an interesting challenge. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention that we're good for this year, but I don't know, because those numbers, when I put it back in next year, will, will show a dramatic jump in um, my budget for next year. So it'll be a very interesting process. Yeah. All right, very good. And um, just one other question. Everything was cut, right? All the improvements that we wanted and everything that was, because uh, Tyler, I don't think, uh, he's, he indicated they probably would be, but I don't think they gave us a definite, but everything was cut. But I... all, all the capital projects that had made it through the process and in the manager's budget all were cut, yes. All right. All right. Uh, COVID-19, that looks like. Yeah, I just wanted to give you an idea of where we were for the summer. <clears throat> um, the good news is um, we opened Millwood's Pond today for swimming. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to investigate it. We had to um, put in a whole new system. And if you can appreciate the planning that goes into the pool, usually takes about three months when you start getting all the maintenance done. And also you start getting all the staff and everything ready. And you get all your procedures in place and you update anything new that's changed. So the budget was approved on May 29th. And so that was a Friday night. And then the, that coming Monday was June 1st. So over the past uh, three weeks, uh, I've had staff working diligently because we had to change all the processes, uh, hire staff because we couldn't give staff a commitment at that time. So as you can appreciate, some staff didn't want to work, some staff had other jobs. And we recruited like crazy to get enough lifeguards to open, which we were able to do. And staff did an amazing job putting in a reservation system for the pool operation because we have to cut our capacity in half and we have to put out on the beach and on the grass 10 by 10 family sites that when you walk in, you can pick a family site to sit at. And that is designed to have all social distancing around it. And in order to come to the pool now, you have to go to our online registration system and sign up and reserve a spot. And we've done Monday through Friday, we've done three time blocks from 10 to 12.30, 1.30 to 4, and 4.30 to 7. And the reason we have the breaks is we have to clean in between. So we have that all set up. And on Saturday and Sunday, there's just not a morning time slot. Again, budget, we're only, we were only funded originally when we opened the pool. We're always not open on Saturday and Sunday morning. So there was just no more money to find to keep open Saturday and Sunday in the morning. But, um, but we have those time blocks. We, um, we got the word out on, I think it was uh, late Tuesday because we just weren't sure we could make everything work to get it open this week. Otherwise it would open next week. And staff made it happen, a great staff that really worked together to make that happen. And we opened today and it was nice because it was, was a little quiet opening and we had um, on the beach, we're able to put 42 family sites that a family can register and come with up to six people. And if you were to multiply that out, that's about 250 people max, which is half the capacity we would have at Mill Woods. So we had to cut the capacity in half, figure out how to put the, um, the family sites in a little grid out there on the beach in the grass. And so um, for today, we had at our 10 a.m. slot, we had 21, uh, our 10 a.m. time slot, we had 21 family sites reserved at 1.30, we had 26, and at 4.30, we had 23. So the word is definitely getting out there. 
And I could tell you on Tuesday, our staff counted the number of calls that came in. We had 80 calls on Tuesday when the pool was going to open. Mm -hmm. And you get to make your reservation 48 hours in advance. And to reserve a, a family site is $5. We're not charging by person. We're just charging five to $5 every time you make a reservation. Okay. That was a lot of information in a short period of time. <laughs> Any questions? I went through that kind of fast. No, I got I'm, kind of, I'm proud of the staff for putting that all together because that was amazing. I just wanted to say I have some friends that went today and they said that it was seamless. It, it seemed really easy and it was just, it was really a lovely day. Like they felt like they were really taken care of, um, that the social distancing was adhered to, um, not so much in the water, that's kind of hard, but at least on the beach and stuff. And they said that it actually felt quite normal. So. Good job. Oh, well, that's good. That's nice to hear. We found out we're learning every day. And uh, I keep telling the staff that that we're going to be changing just because it's so new. And if you can appreciate on the grass when we did the family sites, we painted the square. So we, we painted the square on the grass. You can't paint on sand. You can't put any sticks or stakes or anything because everybody's barefoot on the sand. So staff came up with the idea of using like six inch colored co traffic cones that are multicolored. So they put them all out on the beach on the four corners for each family site. And then we had a, um, one of our residents that was at the pool came up to us and says, you know, it's great that you have all these multicolors, but it's hard to tell where one family site is and another one starts. And, um, what they suggested was to make the cones, take, take all the blue ones and make a square and take all the yellow ones and make a square. And they did that tonight. And so um, it'll open tomorrow now with, we already got a suggestion and it looks a lot better. You actually know where the squares are. So we're even learning from our um, patrons coming in. So it's, it's nice to hear that they had a good day. What's the expected uh, last day? August 14th. We couldn't get the extra week either. We did try, Colleen. Yeah. We couldn't put that one in, but we, yeah. it was in our budget, but it didn't make it through the process. Well, thanks for trying. You know I appreciate that. <laughs> we won't give up. We don't know what we're in for, for, you know, for the future, but at least for today, as you said, not too bad. I mean, we have some things, you know, we wanted, the other thing I didn't mention is, we're always concerned, do people have a computer? Do they have a phone? Can they do the online registration? So what we also put in place was we have a paper registration. So if somebody, um, we, if they call up and say they can't do it, we tell them they can come to the town hall, fill out a paper form that, of their reservation, give it to us, give us the $5, we'll put them in. We'll also, I have staff talking to people on the phone and instructing them how to do it from their phone. And they can do that. And we've even had people um, show up at the site and staff have worked with them there to get them to understand how to do it. And staff have even offered to help them do that. So we're really trying to go out of our way mm -hmm. to make sure we um, reach the people that maybe are not used to doing um, online registration. Kathy, does the town have like a spare iPad or something that could sit at the at the pond for people who showed up and didn't have that access? Yeah, it's certainly something I could look into. Um, I could certainly see what they have um, yeah. and see if that's something we could set up. We do stop the reservation an hour before that time block opens just so we can print out the sheet and get ready for people coming. But, um, but yeah, because we're also trying to make sure we don't want people to show up at the pool and not be able to go swimming. Mm -hmm. So we'll, um, I'll, I'll make that, that's a great idea though. Do you think once you get the handle of dealing with the reservations and getting set up that you might open it up? Yes. To, uh, to walk-ins, especially if we have, if we're only at half capacity of half capacity. 
that's a possibility, but we wanted to start with getting everybody to go online because otherwise it would it would be chaos. Yeah, but no, no, we we thought of that. We figure we need to see how the system plays out. Mary, I you're muted. Okay. Um the we did think about maybe in the future we might be able to move toward uh, stopping registration at the instead of one hour before be at the end of the session so you could continue to register but we are trying to not take any money cash on site so what people would hopefully be able to do is if they walk up and they find out there's still a spot they can go on their phone register and say here's my receipt and then be able to attend so we're, we're just trying to get through people getting used to registering and see how it goes. And then if it, uh, if it turns out that we have, you know, uh, one third open spaces every single day, then maybe we'd be able to make that change and, um, and still not take any cash or any money there, but make it so that people can, you know, register and then here's my receipt and be able to come in. Right, and that's where an iPad there might be handy as well. That has a screen that can get wiped down and that kind of thing. I feel like that capacity that you had even just today, Kathy, is more capacity than I've seen at Mill Woods on a random Wednesday, so that's great. And we actually used a, um, uh, we asked the engineering department to tell us how many 10 by 10 foot squares they could fit at the pool, at the pond, with um, every square being distanced by 15 feet. So that th that would give us the capacity of the beach and the grass, so the sand and the grass. And that's where we came up with, we could do 500 people and we cut it in half to the 250. And it's, it is really spread out. Uh, even I'm surprised that it, it does look like there's so much more space there, but that's on purpose. And we even had to do a new whole cleaning protocol with staff to make sure we had to buy uh, the pump sprayers and the disinfectant. And now we spray down everything in between the time blocks and any touch points. Good. All right, anything else? No, just to let you know that we have staff are looking at other things to do during the summer. We're gonna be looking at um, doing some different things as, as we find stuff and time permits and the social distancing and we're watching all the different governor's executive orders that are coming out. So I think that's, I think that's it. There, so there are some fitness classes still going on and um, all, all of that is, is online. Kathy, was the muster, is that this summer or next summer? It was, it's, it's scheduled for this summer. I don't think they're having it, but because they called me back in like April, but they never got back to me to say they canceled it. They were looking to reschedule it for next year, but it's on my list to follow up with them. But I don't think just the travel alone wouldn't have worked. I, I don't believe. I just haven't heard officially. Okay. Um. I see on here you got field use. So. Yeah, you probably heard that the governor surprised us and said, yeah, you can start opening fields sooner than originally was planned. So we've been working on getting, um, working with Little League men's softball. Maybe Tom would be happy to talk a little bit about what we're doing. Uh, sure, yeah, we're, uh, we've are we got a list of rules to follow with uh, reopen CT and uh, of course USA Softball is the organization we belong to which used to be ASA Softball, but everything from uh, uh, disinfecting the benches and bleachers before game time to uh, no sharing of equipment or keeping it at a minimal uh, minimum and uh, disinfecting, you know, if, couple guys use the same bat, uh, social distancing on the bench in the bleachers. Uh, everybody, if, if you are occasionally getting too close, you ought to be wearing a mask. Um, 
and uh, you know, new ball at the beginning of each game. Uh, we have a 30 minute buffer in between games so that as it, one game finishes, guys, you got to get the heck out of here so that as the new teams or the teams for the, um, the next game are arriving, there's uh, minimal, you know, passing by each other. Uh, there's a number of things. It's, it's not going to be easy, especially dealing with, you know, 30, 40, 50 year old boys. Um, and, but I'm used to it. So we'll get through it. I've got a strong board uh, that's, you know, supportive of everything that we need to do. And hopefully fingers crossed, there's no, um, you know, uh, flare up with the, uh, with the virus and we can play. Uh, normally we play from the end of April until August uh, 20th. And then we have fall ball from right after Labor Day until Halloween. So with starting a week from this coming Monday, we are going to play, well, teams have been given an option. They can either play short season till the end of August or a long season until, um, until Halloween where uh, all teams will play initially throughout August, but then the long-term teams will continue. Uh, it's looking like we're gonna have, um, it looks right now like 16 teams, maybe 17, and it's looking good. It's a, it's a challenge. Like I got nothing better to do. So, but uh, we're, we're making it work. It's looking good. And, and um, the town has been great. I, uh, Kathy and uh, Rachel kind of split duties where Rachel's tending to the pools. Kathy's overlooking the fields and um, where the communication is incredible. I, I appreciate uh, everything that uh, the communication with uh, Rachel every year, but um, the baton's been passed to you, Kathy. You've been awesome too. And answering all our questions in a very short, period of time and physical services has been great but took a ride down today and the fields are looking great um and actually saw people swimming in the and i looking at things as far as the spacing it looked pretty perfect but like i don't know whether it's colleen that said you know in the pool maybe they're or maybe it was you kathy that uh in the pool okay maybe they're a little closer but that's a difficult thing to control but uh, the uh the, the families sprawled out looked nice and distanced but Anyway, looking forward to some softball this summer. Are you still playing in Rocky Hill too? We are, yes. And and um, so Rocky Hill was a little bit more, you know, apprehensive initially, you know, a month ago or so. But I guess they, uh, you know, have been uh, not partnering, but uh, sharing information with Weathersfield and maybe there's another town or two. And they, um, you know, basically when Weathersfield saw the light at the end of the tunnel, Rocky Hill said, we're going to ride on Weathersfield's coattails as far as, um, you know, the dates and things like that. And they're going to have the fields ready. Uh, I've had it confirmed also a week from Monday. Sometimes they're, you know, a few days or a week later, but um, they're, they're going to be right on board. Uh, so it's looking good there too. Very good. Yeah. Um, anything else? Well, just, and Little League is going to do a, se a season. So they've asked for a time with men's softball. We have, uh, fields one and two in the woods and then with Little League they're they're going to be using lighted classic um, high crest for for their boys greenfield softball for the girls and Stillman baseball for the older kids for the older kids they're going to do a clinic it's at least that's what they think they're doing and then up at the high school field We've every year had the Twilight League that's come in and we have two teams that we've always rented the field to and we're going to be able to do that again this year. A shortened schedule, I think they're only going to play in July, but we're working that out with them too. Oh, very so good. We're putting that all together. I didn't realize we had Twilight League baseball. In oh. And we've actually had requests that there are two AAU baseball teams that started up in town that are travel teams that have Weathersfield uh, students. And they're looking for field time. So that will be a challenge just because of um, everything else that's going on. Okay. Kathy, can I ask you a question, please? Um, you, you listed off the fields that Little League is using. I don't see a, a, a great need this moment for any other fields than what we have, field one, field two, and then we have Maxwell Park and Rocky Hill. But if field five is not being used and the need does arrive, will that be a possibility? I mean, through the course of the summer, obviously, not fall or anything like that. Tom, I'm really not sure because 
even though they did all the fields in the spring in March, they had to go, they're going back now to redo them all to get them ready. Right. So I don't think we could just give you a field that we haven't worked on it. We've been concentrating on the fields that everybody said they needed. Sure. So I don't know that we'd have the time to do that. Honestly, okay. And Again, I, I don't see an immediate need, and I appreciate it. I think the numbers are perfect for what we have right now. I just, in noticing five, that, that, that was our field up until, I don't know, three, five years ago, whatever, where we gave it up because we did have the merging with Rocky Hill. So the, the, the point is moot, and if the deed arrived I mean, because of rain out, so. You could certainly look at the field. I, I, you know, I know they got them all ready in the spring, but they've had to go back and, and, and do maintenance on them. Sure. And it's, okay. it's tricky because July is usually they're moving on to other things because Little League is done, men's softball is going on, uh, we have some other things going on. So it's been very interesting trying to do all the regular stuff, go back and do the fields, and everybody wants it to be perfect. And we may not be able to give everything perfect, but we want to make the field playable and safe. Sure. That's that's the goal. Okay. Thank you. Because they're going to play. If you think about it, like we're not using the web baseball field because that'll take too long to get it ready. But mm -hmm. also they're starting July 6th and they're going to end the end of July. And the end of July, web turns over to football. So you, there, there wouldn't be a lot of time. So it's been an, an interesting look at, well, which field should we use? Because then we have to convert over to fall and are we going to have fall sports? So it, it makes life very interesting. Yeah. Are the soft, are the fields ready for Little League? Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, yes, they're all ready. And, and they, are they going to have the equipment boxes out, or is that not allowed for COVID? Uh, that hasn't come up. So, you know, that's a good question, Colleen. I don't know if they're going to be able to have the boxes because they can't shear stuff. But I don't know. I know. I mean, there's the catcher stuff, so that's. Yeah, that's a good question. And I know they're getting, they're getting direction from National Little League, so they may have certain things, but I could check with them Okay. and see. Um, we talked about they wanted to change the locks on all the boxes. We talked about that, but we never talked about the boxes being out there. <laughs> that's a good point. Thank you. All right. Um... Let's see, Sullivan Wells House, Farmer's Market. Yeah, they were open today. Mary actually went down today to, to check it out. I don't know if you want to just give a quick heads up. It's small, um, but it was well organized and people were, if they were waiting their turn at one of the tables, people were socially distant and wearing masks. So it actually was, it was nice to see um, they, it, I don't, I hadn't been in a long time. So the, the tables are set like in a circle and they have signs saying one way. So they don't want people crisscrossing. So they kind of come in and you go toward the house and then around toward the cove, back over toward DMV. Um, it, so it, it was, like I said, it was small, but it was, there was a nice variety and everybody was, uh, doing what they're supposed to do. And they had a, a guy playing guitar and singing on the porch of the Wells house, which is kind of a nice, a nice touch. Okay, very good. Um, next thing on here, is the, uh, can I see a farm committee? There's nothing going on. I've gotten no communication, nothing. So uh, as far as I know, everything is on hold. Nothing is happening. Um, next thing, board member, member comments, any comments, questions? Anyone? Just, just a quick question, Kathy, and I'm not sure if it's yours or physical services, but there's been an orange traffic, I'll call it an orange traffic barrel, on the uh, center of the green on the south south leg of it. it. Looks like there's probably been a sinkhole there. The barrel's been there forever. The barrel's actually starting to sink probably halfway into the sinkhole. I'm not sure if it's more a parks thing or a, or physical services, but just... And I, I know if they fill it, it might sink again, but I'm just curious what it's there for. I, I assume it's a sinkhole, but just something that um, it's, it's been there. This is certainly long before COVID, and I'm just curious to know what's going on with it. Which end of the green, Mike? The south end. South? Okay. Yeah. I'll check. 
I don't know. I don't. I actually just saw some cones in Mill Woods by a sinkhole. And no, I, this is this is one of those big um, big orange like traffic delineators. It's it's. it's oh, it's, oh, okay. It's actually tipped now because I I assume it's a sinkhole. I think there's a catch basin in the in the uh, valley oh. of it. <laughs> That's probably okay. what it's protecting. But it's just something that you know, either it could be taken care of or or uh, or the barrel you know something filled in so the barrel's not tipped and somebody trips in it or something. Okay, very good. Um, and now, uh, the Harbor Management Commission, the Harbor Master Report. Mike, got anything for us? Uh, we got 20 boats out in the mooring balls so far. Seems like every week there's another one or two being added. Mm -hmm. the harbor boats still waiting to be looked at at the shop. Good boy. How yeah. many uh, how many uh, moorings are uh, rented out, Mike? Twenty so far. Of twenty, and there are twenty boats out also. There's twenty rented. There's probably like fourteen, fifteen boats out on the mooring balls physically right now. Okay, I misunderstood. I thought you said there were twenty. Right okay. Yeah, I'm staring at the cove right now. One guy's coming in. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, some guy uh, decided to lose his boat off his trailer this afternoon what? on the ramp. How so is the tow truck came down, pulled it back on ramp? his trailer. Yeah. Were you there? I Mike? No, I got a text from Rachel saying someone lost their boat trailer when I got here. When I was coming here, I was down the street. The tow truck was driving away already. Oh. But the guy just left. He was hanging out for a little bit to double check on his boat, and he's pulled away. <clears throat> Mike, I, n I noticed the uh, DEP boats in there now as well, correct? Yes, it is in there. I haven't seen them out on it yet, but it's in the water. Okay, and and the status of of um, your boat is that what's what's the issue with that? When are you going to get that back? I called last week. I was going to try to call this week. I'm going to call again tomorrow. They haven't looked at it yet. It's been like three weeks. I'm getting frustrated, but I will be calling again tomorrow to see what's going on with it. Yeah, I mean, we were, um, I took a cruise um, from the cove on Sunday, and it was, the river was very, really busy. very busy. Very busy. Last week at Ham Hamden on Saturday, there was like probably 100 boats. Yeah. People are out on the water enjoying it, so. The only other question I have, I don't know if it's for Kathy or you, Mike, the, um, were we, Try to discouraging, try to discourage uh, fishing from the boat launch docks, and they're supposed to be fishing at the other docks. I know there's kind of been an ongoing discussion over the past couple of years. I'm just curious because I, I notice a lot of people. It's probably because it's a much nicer dock fishing off the boat launch dock. I'm not sure if it's problematic or we really don't care. It's I every time I see them, I tell them you can't fish there, I and mean, there's a sign there, and they they just do what they want. It's, Half the time it's just people sitting, but there's some fishing, and you tell them that, and the, the sign's right there. Go to the other dock to fish, but people do what they want to do. It's not really problematic right now; it's not that busy, but they shouldn't be fishing on that dock. But there are still people fishing on that. Uh, okay. They have been going with people who actually try to explain to them. My Spanish is not that good, so. But no, you have to leave, they get up and they leave, they go down past the barn, down down the water edge, go fishing there, or go to other dock. It's a matter of enforcement. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's, there's no tickets or anything you can give, right, Kathy? They just kind of like tell them not to do it. I'm yeah. well, sure econ or police can do something, but I can't do anything about it. I just tell them so they can't fish here. You said that there, there, are sure. signs? There, there, are, there are signs there? It's posted? There's one sign when you walk in says no fishing on the dock within 200 feet of the dock. I don't know, we should get one written up in Spanish too next to it. That's probably a good idea. Yeah, we the, only, the, the only co the concern I would have, obviously, if people are launching their boats and somebody gets a hook or something while they're cast, I mean, it is kind of a it is kind of a safety issue. Yeah. That's the wrong yeah. reason. Mm -hmm. They go back, they cast the thing. Someone's walking by, the hook gets them in the face, and uh, they're yep. hurt. Yeah, yeah. 
or a bolt goes to tie up to the dock and the line gets stuck in this prop. Yeah. 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 But when I see them, I tell them, I walk over to them, I tell them they can't fish there. Did they go fish in the other dock or they go down the sh on the shore? Mm -hmm. For the most part, they listen, they pack up and they leave, but not until someone says something. Yeah. And we can also let the attendant know. Um, a lot of times they're doing it when the attendant isn't there, but we could remind the attendant to walk down and remind people that they can't be on there. Right. Okay, anything else, Mike? Are you good? That's it, thank you. I'm good. All right. good. Any other comments? No. Or... no. Yeah, you... I, got... I would love to motion to adjourn if you're oh. fishing for that. Yeah, did you have something? I just, I forgot to mention, um, we've been doing some work at the main entrance to the community center. Mm -hmm. We had a drainage problem there. The brickwork under the canopy of the main entrance was starting right. to wear out. And um, we've always wanted, and some of the sidewalk was um, also having a problem, the concrete sidewalk. So they're replacing some of the sidewalk. They're doing a better grade. They've put in a better catch base in there. They're replacing all the bricks under the canopy. We're moving the flagpole. We're taking it out of that little indentation. And we're moving it. I thought this was great. The guys suggested we move it to right behind the 9-11 brick wall. So the flagpole is going to be right there. And then on the right-hand side, as you walk in, there's going to be um, some plantings there to make it a softer kind of look. Okay. So that's going on right now while we're closed. All right. That's good. All right. Anything else? Tom. I, I, I'd like the motion to adjourn if that, that works for everybody. Got a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Uh, all right, we'll see you guys in a, oh, actually, there's one other thing. We were talking about um, if we should have either the July or the August meeting, if we should maybe cancel one of them, there's really not much going on. So um, I can't make the August meeting either way. I don't know if other people can't make the July meeting or, um, so it's up to everybody, whoever, you know, whatever month we can uh, get the most people, I guess that's the meeting that we'll have. So I think it might make sense based on what's going on with fall sports. The key August, like, you mean? One, I don't know which one makes more sense for fall sports or August because we're going to be more likely to know what's really going on by then. So probably August makes more sense. Uh, I agree. Uh, so we want to cancel the July one? Is that it? Sure. Okay, cancel the July. All right. Tom, hide your excitement about that. <laughs> I, I'm game for 13 meetings a year. I, 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 <laughs> all right, very good. We'll see everybody in uh, you, August. All right. Thank you. Good night. Have a good one. Good night. See you all. Bye.